Well, hello and welcome back to part 18 of Object-Oriented Programming by <clears throat> popular demand, the pressure cooker controller class gets a GUI. So let's see how that is. This is often used to test controller software when you don't have the physical device. Remember we talked about separating model, view, and controller. The whole idea there is that the controller class incorporates the logic, the how things are done. The view incorporates how things interact with the human beings. So whether it's a physical pressure cooker pot or a GUI, the controller software doesn't really care because it uses the same logic. So we're using this GUI as a view. It's very simplistic, doesn't have fancy styles, fonts, shading, colors, animations, any of that, but then again neither does the pressure cooker. On the shared folder you'll find these three files that I've put here in green font. And if you run pressure cookers GUI you should get a screen that looks like this now in addition to the buttons of the pressure cooker we added two little sliders at the bottom and those things are going to move left and right as the power gets turned on and off and as the temperature changes also, if you look at the clock right underneath where it says low pressure or just to the right of time, that little slash will dance back and forth as the seconds tick away. So this is a realistic example of modern programming. It requires event-driven processes. In other words, nothing's going to happen until you click on something. You have to deal with real time that's you know real seconds that little thing is going to dance back and forth as the seconds tick away because that's exactly what the real pressure cooker would do and you have a time-based control system that has inputs outputs and feedback those uh, two sliders on the bottom are actually two gauges so that'll be the temperature and the power level you're going to need to learn a couple of things that we haven't talked about in order to get the next bit of homework done. I don't expect you to know how to do this GUI right away, but knowing how to do it and using it are two different things. Sometimes we have to deal with bits and not bytes. And the way we do this is we use these operators that specifically work with bits and we're in the Python documentation the link is shown there on the screen it's called bitwise operations on integer types why integers because integers are represented directly in base 2 uh, remember floating point variables are uh, represented with let's just say differently now suppose you had an integer in some variable called x and suppose that the that x contained the number 13 well in binary that would be 1101 and if you don't know how to use binary now is a good time to pause and uh, look it up bitwise and as opposed to the regular and when I say if x equals 7 and y equals 8 that's a boolean and this is the bitwise and so it does the boolean operation but it does it a bit at a time we use the operator ampersand so a ampersand b which we read a and b is one only if both a and b are one but a bit at a time so therefore one ampersand x would be one 2 ampersand x would be 0 because there's a 0 in that position. 4 
which in binary is 000100, well that, you end it with X, and sure enough, you get the number 4, and so on and so forth along the list here. If you don't understand how this works, again, um, review your binary arithmetic and how Boolean algebra works, or shoot me an email or something. The next thing we want to talk about, now this is not a class about ellipse, uh, eclipse, but I do want to show you the debug system that it has. Sometimes you're not really quite sure what's going on, so wouldn't it be nice to stop the program in the middle of what it's doing and see what all the variables are equal to? That's exactly what debug does. So in order to get the debug view, you click on that little green bug on the top right hand corner. Then you go anywhere in your program and you see there my example on line 66 and you double click to the left of that line number and a little green check will appear. There is a way to add breakpoints through the menu but I forget how it is anymore. It doesn't matter. You double click just left of the line number. Now instead of run as use the option debug as and it has again a little green bug. The program will run until it gets to that line and then it stops before it runs that line. When it stops you're going to see on the screen essentially what I'm showing you here. The clip shows you what's going on. You have a a window called variables and you'll see the value of each variable at that moment in time. So you see for example under um, error range right now it's an integer that's equal to 12. Uh, the minimum division is a float that's equal to 0 0.142 blah 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 and so on and so forth. Then you can use the debug commands and you could actually step through the program one line at a time or you can skip over methods that you know work and there are a lot of other options that I'll let you dive into on your own time but the most important ones are F5 which is the line by line tracing and F6, which allows you to skip over the next method. Okay, this is a short video. I just wanted to show you these two things because I want you to review them before we attack the next session, which is going to be by far the most difficult um, sample program that we've covered so far. So enjoy. Have a great day.